so we're back at Maximus and today I've got Stu and Laura Davis here and they're gonna have a look at the engine for us so we're gonna um, yeah tell us what you think we're gonna do today then Stu right I think the most important thing first of all is to get the top off the fuel tank have a look inside see what's there and if I'm happy with that uh, then I'll continue to the fuel filters we'll change the fuel filters get it all bled um, change the oil filter change the oil and then I'll try and start it um, just we're just get started by filling the um, the strainer up with water and let's see what happens and then going on from there we can then go move down to the leg check that out and etc 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 great <laughs> sounds fun and Laura, Laura is uh, um, my, no he's not a bit of mate you're as good as I am actually uh, you are Oh, she is. Yeah. She, she's, she's, she's very good at uh, doing what you do. Yeah, yeah. do as I'm told. So you, no. so you work as a team and yeah, you go yeah. around yeah. And, and service engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's it. I mean, um, my it used to be my game when I was a lot younger and I worked in Africa and the Middle East for big oil companies and uh, this is what I used to do. I used to fix things. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, was, it was a very interesting life I led. And the thing about it was, if I couldn't fix it, it didn't get fixed. So I was pretty <laughs> used to making things work. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. In yeah. difficult circumstances, shall we say. But there we go. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, this engine is a Perkins engine. Or it started off as a Perkins engine. Then it became a part. Well, I did send you some blurb about it. But originally it was a Perkins engine and I still consider it to be a Perkins engine and consequently Perkins parts fit. Um, Perkins parts are a lot cheaper than Volvo Penta. Uh, being a careful type of person, <laughs> so I will buy these. Um, so the uh, parts for engines who uh, donated these, these uh, parts to us to do this job, um, they supply all these bits and pieces and they supply the genuine Perkins parts. Um, so we've got that. Um, the, 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 these I would recommend that people carry a spare f oil filter, fuel filter, um, there, and another fuel filter there. So I would carry a fuel filter, a spare alternator belt, um, anodes, uh, those need changing not so often, but uh, handy to have on board for the leg. Um, there's the water pumping paddle, which I'll get out in a minute, and then oh, Laura can undo that there. Uh, but minimum, um, I would carry. Uh, let me just this, one. this is a uh, what they call a CAV two ninety six, very commonly used, millions of them used throughout the world. Uh, a bit awkward to change, but very reliable. Uh, and they, as I say, they fit millions of, of Perkins engines, all sorts of engines throughout the world. I would carry three or four. In fact, I do on my boat. If you ever do get a problem with, with um, water the fuel that you will be changing that that's the first filter uh, so you will be changing I, I recommend three or four of those uh, at any one time on the boat um, the other fuel filter again a couple of those uh, that's the uh, secondary fuel filter that fits on the engine um, again a Perkins part but perfectly suitable because that is a Perkins engine underneath the green paint um, so yeah carry three or four of those as well just in case um, that's it. the oil filter not so much uh, a problem you'll be changing this one to you you don't get into an emergency situation uh, with these but that's that's the oil filter which I will um, change that later on. so carry a, uh, an alternator belt carry fuel filters spares and carry a spare uh, water pumping pallets just in case it's always just in case There we go, nice shiny. See the pin and see how straight the blades are compared with that other one that we've taken out of the engine. Um, first impressions are the engine is in pretty good nick. Um, relatively new by the looks of it, I believe 2005. Um, the surface rust on the engine mountings down there, I think we'll clean up with a wire brush. Uh, the same with the this bit here where they bolt onto the engine, engine beds. And again, just keep cleaning them up. What happens with this is the raw water seawater pump here, when people change the impeller or you know, seawater comes out, it 
goes on that side so you'll note that that side is relatively not rusty not as, or not as rusty as that there so um yeah well that, that, that can be cleaned up this here is the what they call a primary fuel filter this is a cav 296 despite it saying volvo penta on it i've got one of those we can change uh, so the fuel goes in that first that's a five micron filter and then it comes from there to the secondary or the engine filter there as a second fuel filter again five microns and then the oil filter is the one down there you can just see uh, that white one there so we'll, we'll get those on off later on um, this here this is just um, easy enough to take it apart um, big steel washers on there to hold it more securely that's the uh, sea water uh, strainer um, the alternator the belt slack but we've got a new belt to go on there uh, basically um, a little bit of cleaning up and um, that's the thing that concerns me there if we can get into that get that fuel tank undone so we can see what's in there if it's clean fine we'll crack on then with the uh, changing the filters and the oil and then we will see if we can get the engine to start great that's a fuel gauge level sender mm. uh, that's the sensor that fits in the tank there'll be a float inside that goes up and down like that uh, so eventually if you get a gauge for it uh, we can join that up to the gauge and then you'll be able to see how much fuel is in there on the gauge this here is the, the fuel in, inlet from the back where you put the fuel in uh, that there is the breather for the tank that there i think is the yes is the fuel from the tank to the engine and that one there is the fuel return from the injectors so what happens is that the fuel is fed by a primary pump or the lift pump into the fuel injector pump there it pumps it up to the injectors which is there and then there is ex excess fuel always part of the reason for having excess fuel is to cool these injectors and that excess fuel comes out of there into that pipe and back into the tank so it's continually circulating and one of the things that people don't realize is that the fuel filters are actually a fuel polisher because the fuel that's going through the injectors and back to the tank is actually cleaned and every time you use it it cleans it and cleans it and cleans it so there is a built-in benefit to that as well oh this is something that would be done every five ten years or if you yeah, get in, we've it, done it every five haven't we yeah normally what i do is i take this little sender unit out here on my because i've got a plastic tank and i take that out and then I can see inside with my little torch and if there's anything I use, I'll show you later on when we go to change the oil, I've got a, a, a little pump to suck and I can put the tube in and I can chase any bits and pieces inside and suck them in. Because you do get condensation from the air in there and it w I will not be surprised if we see, if we don't see, I will not be surprised if we see some water in the bottom, but that's, that's quite normal. And is that? That's how you get diesel bug then yes. from the yeah. condensation. Yeah, yeah. Diesel, bug, diesel bug grows on the interface between water and the diesel. And uh, you, you'll see sometimes, when, when I've opened them up before now, you can see where condensation's trickled down the inlet pipe and then it's gone into the tank and then it's run down the tank. And where the water's run to the lowest point of the tank, you can see the black marks where the bugs have, have been. So they leave the traces uh, behind. But... Uh, yeah, a diesel bug per se doesn't exist in diesel as such, but it feeds on the interface between water and diesel. That's, uh, that's going to be I know, I didn't want to push that, it too hard, I thought I'd let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, um, this here is the injection pump here, and this is part of the me mechanism here that there is the stop lever so you've got a cable attached to this which goes up to the cockpit somewhere but in an emergency you can do that and it will stop the engine so you, oh, can, right. so you can physically stop it by doing that um just like that see the cable there you pull yeah. up to stop it but you can do that and that will stop it like yeah. that this here is the throttle so again you can manually operate it that's a cable that goes up to the uh the, the throttle lever up there but that's that is the throttle so you if we do get it going you'll see me um actually moving this to make it rev it'll it'll be warm in there but in an emergency if the engine is really running away 
get your hand in there and stop it with ha that. Have you come across that before in uh, engines no, that don't no, stop running? No, 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 no. Well, no, actually, I tell a lie, but not in a runaway situation. I've come across engines that have got solenoid, electrical solenoids, mine for example, and sometimes the solenoids go wrong and it won't stop. You turn the key off and it, and it won't stop. So you just come down, do that, and then the engine stops. Right, this is the air intake for the engine, and this, this foam thing here on the back is a filter. That's a, a, a crude, rudimentary air filter. Uh, which is a good idea. A lot of these engines don't have them on, so you get a, um, the noise of the intake. So you hear the engine going, and that's because you can hear the noise of the intake. This is a good idea to have a sponge on the intake there. Oh, no, no, that'll, that'll be a uh, something you can buy from, um, you can even buy them from car shops. Young, young men like to take the air filters off their engines and the cars make them sound, vroom, 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 vroom. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> And of course, that there is the oil filler cap. Uh, to fill, put the oil in. And always a good sign is when you take the filler cap off, you can see the valve mechanism. Uh, if there was water in the oil, you would see a white emulsion. There isn't any, it's as clean as a whistle, which is a good thing. It means that the oil in there is relatively clean and uh, there is no water or condensation in the engine. Right, this is the uh, water coolant, the, the fresh water coolant, where the antifreeze goes in, which is a bit of a misnomer. It's not only antifreeze, it is an, a corrosion inhibitor as well. Uh, the cap comes off easily enough, and you can see the level of it. It should be just about uh, half an inch below the cap, which it is, which is a good sign again. Uh, I don't know whether the camera can get in. You can just about see the green liquid there. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. Um, so the level is good uh, and it is green. Normally when it starts getting exhausted it starts changing colour. So uh, I would say uh, at this moment in time leave it as it is uh, and then with a view to perhaps uh, in the winter time changing it. And what I will do is show, show you how to do that uh, where the drain points are on this engine later on. And there's the pickup pipe there, that's what they call a stack pipe, so that the pickup is always from the bottom of the tank, not from the top. And you can see the uh, fuel gauge level switch, which goes up and down. That's quite uh, interesting. No, it's, it's, it's relatively clean. Now, put it on there. And now... Oh. Yeah, it's all right. What's the bottom? If you aim at the back here, you can see the tank shining through from the bottom. See over there? Oh, yeah. yeah, see the shiny bit? And then there's a little bit of uh, black stuff that's above, above. But it's nothing, I wouldn't expect to see it shiny, shiny clean, but you can just see there's a little bit in there. At this moment in time, okay, if you really wanted to be pedantic, you could take the tank out, empty it, steam clean it, etc., etc., etc. But looking at the pickup, there it's relatively clean sorry there it's relatively clean and i don't think that bug is going to affect it um, so what i would be doing is getting some marine 16 anti-bug treatment and actually putting that in and letting that work through the system um, to go through but it looks relatively clean Some, but not a lot. Uh, at this moment in time, what I would say is, go for it. Get some Marine 16. Put a good slug in to to to, to work on the on on that there, it, because I know you're going to launch shortly. Um, just take your time. It'll be be okay. And with a view to uh, next winter, take the tank out and get it steam cleaned, the yard will know where or how to we'll probably do it for you. So relatively easy, do what we did, did it there, take those screws out, take all the, the fittings off here, um, and then there'll be somewhere, uh, oh there's a little piece of wood to hold it in, get the fittings off, empty it, 
lift it out, still clears on the, on the way you go. But it wasn't as bad, it's not as bad as, as, as I think the surveyor thought and what I was expecting. It's it, relatively pretty good. Oops. So the diesel's been in the tank for two years. Yes. What do you, what do you think of that then? Uh, okay, okay. Um, I can't see any water in there. And as I said to you before, the bug grows on the interface uh, between the water and the diesel. So that there will be a culmination of many, many years. And there, I can't see any water in there now. Um, so it means that there's nothing for the bug to grow in. So I don't think that that bug is live, if you see what I mean. It's just it's just the remnants of stuff that's gone, gone there before. And I don't think that that there is going to make any difference for, for the purpose of what you're going to do shortly. But as I say, for winter time, I would be thinking about emptying that tank, lifting it out and giving it a steam clean. The uh, normal thing that people say is fill the tank to the top so that condensation can't occur on the empty parts of the tank. Um, yeah, good idea. Um, I've never done that myself, um, and I've never had that much, uh, that many problems with it. I, I take, I check it every about five years, my tank, and it, it's never been an issue. So. Okay, the rust always looks worse than what it is. Um, the wire brush, um, I've got a little drill with a little rotary brush. Get it on here, um, get it off, and all of a sudden you can see it's starting to look better all, already. Uh, you can buy. Um, Pure rust or a liquid like that's got phosphoric acid in it, I think. Paint it on, it goes black, it kills the rust, and then use some hammerite, get some silver hammerite paint, a little pot, and just paint it on to keep the rust at bay in the future. And the only reason there's a lot of rust there is because of the proximity of the, of the raw water, uh, the seawater or raw water pump. When you change the impeller, seawater comes out of there and it's obviously been splashing onto there, and that's why that's rusty and this galvanized one isn't. But you can see already just a little bit of, brush, of brushing and also it starts to look a lot lot better uh, but that's the sort of thing to do you got it cleaning underneath the engine and our engine we take pride in the fact that you eat your dinner off it it's as clean yeah. as clean can be this is quite clean in here though i'm looking at it i'm thinking this is clean yeah right okay valves uh we all know the saying now, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, there's the fuel shut off valve there on the top of the tank. Uh, it's, at the moment it shuts, so it's righty tighty and it's tight. So when you open it, this is what taught to me many, many years ago, 60, 58 years ago, as I started as an apprentice. You open the valve fully, like I am doing, and then when you get to the end, like this, we get there, and then this, there, you then close it half a turn. So the next person that comes to it, when they grab hold of it, it's loose, so they know it's open. If it's closed, it's tight. If you do it tight that way, they don't know when it's open or closed, so sometimes they'll turn it left to open it, and they'll break it. Just a little thing that was taught to me as an apprentice many years ago.